another episode of our This Travel Tribe podcast. Today we have a guest here with us who's going to be talking all about something that I've wanted to talk about on here for a long time. And so I'm grateful to have Ben Camille here with us today. We're going to be talking about travel insurance and it's going to be really fun and interesting, I promise. So stick around for this. But let me tell you a little bit about Ben and then I'll kick it over to him and he can add to it. So Ben is the founder and the CEO of Travel Defend, which is North America's leading travel insurance brokerage. And so he really is an expert on travel insurance. He's gonna talk about like why you need travel insurance, what it can even cover, how to find the best travel insurance for your family when you're traveling, and so much more. So it's gonna be a really informative and fun episode today. So Ben, thank you so much for coming, and do you want to take a minute and further introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think maybe the best way to introduce myself is maybe to kind of go back and kind of say the story of how the company started and the origin, because I think it's pretty fascinating. I think a lot of uh, not only travelers, but business people could find it interesting. So for 17 years before we started Travel Defend, I ran a uh, luxury tour company. Okay, super, super high end. I mean, we're talking about you know, a week event that would cost one, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars for a family. Okay, so we're talking like the ultimate okay. um, in luxury. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't. Well, yeah. That's a whole other podcast for another time. Yes. But that, that was unbelievable. The kind of event that we were running there, um, and obviously COVID kind of destroyed us there for a while. And when we were coming back after, you know, kind of coming out of it, we realized that nobody is going to come to our event without travel insurance. And so I really kind of took it on myself just for my clients because, you know, obviously we did have really high end clients, very demanding. And we said, look, we really better figure this out for them. Um, and so I kind of just delved into that world and I realized that my brain worked really well in terms of understanding travel insurance because it can get really complex and many people kind of get lost in the weeds and not really understanding it. But I came in with such a freshness and such an open mind to say, look, in real life, that's all I care about, is who, what companies actually pay out in real life? Like I was looking at it from a real perspective of saying, someone has a lot of money on the line, they need to be medically protected if anything happens, it obviously takes liability away from me as a, as a tour operator as well. And so I kind of went down that road and started to really foster relationships in the industry. Um, started to get to know and going to all their events. I started to know who are the head of the claims departments, who's actually making the decisions on who gets paid, right? So we took it down to a really fine science um, and really just started to help my own clients. And then we went to all the different tour operators in our niche and we said, look, you guys are all in the same situation. And we started a company called Travel Defend, which is our company now. And we said, just send all your clients to us. We will take care of them. We'll answer all their questions. We'll do the paperwork for them. We'll make sure they get paid in real life if they have a problem. Um, and we'll kick you back as well, commission. And that was great. And all these companies said, you know what? We need help with this. And they started sending all their clients to us. And our, their clients were in seventh heaven. I mean, really, they were like someone I could actually talk to that is not motivated by, you know, you call an insurance company, right? They're offering you one or two options. And so they're always going to be like, yeah, you have to use our option. And we're not like that. We, we, we have the luxury of looking at every option and saying, really, what is the best specifically for you? Um, and so that's kind of the background of how we began the company. And then we went out to, I mean, we have hundreds of tour operators, travel agents we work with. We have thousands of clients now. Um, but that's kind of like how we began. Um, and it really just uh, has taken off in a, in a pretty unbelievable way since then. Um, and I think it's because, you know, we give tremendous service that nobody else offers. And it's not meant to be like an ad for us. It's just we have access to everything. There's no reason to ever not use us. We don't add a penny to the cost. So everyone listening must say, oh, well, you're going to help us. You're going to charge us way more for this. No, we don't. We don't charge a penny more because the insurance company give us commission for every sale. And so if you go online and it says $100 and you reach out to us, it will also say $100. I mean, there are, the insurance company does say that there's something called preferred rates, which because of the volume that we do, they claim that we could get cheaper prices. But I'm not even saying that because I haven't actually seen it very often. Once in a rare time, you'll get a really crazy cheap price for someone. But normally it's the same price. Um, and we'll make sure that you're protected. We have a WhatsApp that once you're on your trip, uh, that's monitored by our team 24 hours a day. And so anyone who has any issue on their trip, and that's where we'll get into all crazy stories, because all day 
Um, we see sickness, injury, hospitalizations, cancellations. It's literally minute to minute. It's crazy. Uh, so we, when you see the real world of what goes on, uh, I'm, you know, I told you before, I mean, I'm super paranoid about travel now. I see a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> I hear some of your stories that might even help some skeptics of travel insurance purchasers, you know, maybe do yeah. one. We've used travel insurance a lot on bigger trips for our family. Um, and so I think that it can be useful. Luckily, we've never had to make a claim, so I don't know how that would have gone. Um, but mm. I think, first of all, I love just hearing about your company and how it started and what you offer. So it really shows that you, you know the industry. And so first yeah. of all, if we have a family who's planning a trip, it's like a bigger trip, let's say, um, maybe like 10 days in Europe. Um, do they, why would they need travel insurance? Like, can you right, so just we can help write. understand like basics, like I've never done travel insurance, <clears throat> I don't know if I really need it. Like why would someone yeah. want it in the first place? Right, so we can talk about that from many different angles, right? Travel insurance can do a lot of things, but at the base level, the main reasons that people buy travel insurance is for two reasons. Number one, uh, if there's an expensive trip cost, you know, let's say your example, you're going to, I think you said Spain, right? So let's say you got an Airbnb, let's say you booked a tour, um, and some of these tours can be very expensive. You can spend thousands, thousands of dollars up front. Airbnbs certainly can be thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, if anything happens to you guys, God forbid, obviously, and even in this fake scenario, we'll still say God forbid. But if anything happens, you know, you could be out a ton of money, right? So people are nervous about that. And we do see a lot of that. Now, if you're going on a trip that is not, has not really any expense you're nervous about, like let's say the airlines, oh, I'll get a credit for the air, airlines. I'm not worried about it. Um, it's, it should really be at that point, uh, medical coverage. Now, there are other things travel insurance does, which we'll get into like baggage loss, bag delay, trip delay, that's all included as well. Um, but medical, I mean, medical is something that, you know, can have life changing um, effects. You know, we had a man last week in Egypt that had a stroke, and so he needed to be medically evacuated back to America. Um, and our team uh, is now very well versed in how to expedite these situations because all of our travelers get priority treatment. And so it's not like you're faceless and you're on your own because when you buy, do buy on your own, you really are faceless. It's hard to know what to do. And a lot of times people are not thinking clearly in those situations because they're stressed out. And obviously it's a stressful situation. Even if they did, uh, even if they weren't stressed, they don't even understand the policies, the ins and outs of what, what actually can I get? Uh, what actually do I do in this situation? And so it is really hard when you're on your own. Um, but that doesn't mean that all the benefits aren't there. They really are there. Uh, assuming that you went with the correct policy and the correct company, because that goes into another can of worms where there's hundreds of policies in America and some are great and some aren't. You have to know if you have primary coverage and secondary coverage. So it's hard to answer your question in a super quick answer because it there really could go in a lot of different directions. But um, if you would work here for a week and you see what goes on in real life, in the real world with people, I promise you, you would never leave America. If you're within America, that's different. But if you're leaving the country, you would never leave without travel insurance, especially with a family. Okay, and I think medical is a big one. I know that was one reason I bought it in the first place when we were traveling with our kids because our health insurance that we had at home just through work, it actually didn't work in some other countries. Like I called the insurance to check, no. out, like, yeah, we don't cover you if you go to Mexico or something. Sure. And I was like, oh, but I don't know that people realize that, right? So it's, um, mm -hmm. And that means like you're in Mexico with no health care coverage. Like that seems kind of crazy and dangerous. But I think some people yeah. don't realize that. And the hospital can almost be like a jail because in many cases, if it is a serious situation, they won't let you leave without paying. Uh, we had a man, to your point, in Mexico recently who had a collapsed lung. He went on a diving accident and... Uh, he didn't go like there's limits in the policies with how deep you can go where it's still considered like something they will cover. Because if you do something that's super dangerous, typically like the example they give is like running with the bulls and things like that. They will not cover you unless you have a really precise policy. But um, he went to a normal depth. It wasn't like anything crazy. And he had a, a collapsed lung incident. And so he was in the hospital for a number of days. And uh, at the end, he wanted to leave the hospital and they wouldn't let him leave uh, without paying. So either he had to give his, 
his payments, his credit card or whatever it was. It was a $27,000 bill. Oh, wow. Um, and he got us involved really late in the game because typically we would have been involved from the beginning. We tell all of our travelers, no matter what's going on with you, minor, major, your bags are lost, whatever it is, just always reach out to our team. He didn't do that. He was in the, and then he called all of a sudden, say, hey, I'm in the hospital. I've been here for four days. They won't let me leave in a panic. You know, and right. so we did, uh, we do know who to talk to on the insurance company side, the higher ups and how to kind of facilitate that. And within two hours, which we would have wanted it faster, but still within two hours, we had a, the hospital was paid by the insurance company who was allowed to leave. Um, and if he was on his own, this would have been, he would have been stuck there probably for days. Yeah. Uh, Cause, so cause it really is. Travel insurance is great, but it does sound like going with travel defend is even better because you have like that more white glove attention. It's just tough on your own. It's tough. People don't know what to do. And I wouldn't either. Why would you know what to do? You know, unless right. you have the experience like of dealing with it. Something you, yeah. It's not like what you have to usually do. Okay. So right. now you did mention, um, you know, traveling in the United States could be different. Like, do you still recommend that families get travel insurance? Let's say they are heading to New York City for a long weekend or something like that. Like, is travel insurance necessary or is it more like the bigger out of the country trips that you recommend it for? Well, again, unless there's a real cost on the table, like let's say you are doing something within America, you're going to, I'll just make this up, let's say you're going to a yoga retreat, okay? And it's thousands of dollars, then you may want to protect that. But if you're just going to New York and you know that the, you know, the hotels typically will have like really easy cancellation and your health insurance at home, let's say you're in, you live in Ohio, okay? Uh, your health insurance at home will cover you anyway. Yeah, you could still buy it and you know if your bags are delayed or things like that. But no, typically I, I listen, I never want people to spend more than they have to. I I, I wouldn't typically uh, sell them a policy. I mean, I could if they want to, but right. our team is really trained to do what's best for the traveler um, because we do thousands of policies. So it's not about trying to get the most in terms of one policy, get the most money we can possibly get or really convince people that really shouldn't buy to buy. We're not, that's not what we're about. You know, we're about just helping the people in the correct way. And if they see that we're recommending them not to buy a policy, then they know that we're really in it for the long haul. We're in it just to help them in real life, you know, and just do what's good for them. So again, I need to know more information about your hypothetical, but, but in many cases, uh, I would say no. Uh, people do call us. And, you know, our team will say, you know, they'll say like, why are you even buying a policy? And they'll say, well, I don't know. I thought I was supposed to. And you're like, you could, but like, you don't have to, you know, so there's a lot, you know, there's that also, you know, I, I don't know. Within America, it's a totally different game. Yeah. Okay. You're, I can't, I can't hear you. Your sound is off. Oh, okay. Am right. I good now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I did hear somewhere sometime that you can buy like an annual policy mm -hmm. that covers all your trips. Is that actually something that's true? And do you recommend something like that? Right. So annual plan uh, is possible to buy. Uh, for some reason, it's been created with the insurance companies of all companies. It's pretty weak policy, meaning the perfect annual plan has really not been created. I couldn't tell you why that is. But annual plans have a number of problems. Number one, People think that it's set it and forget it. You buy it once, you travel, you know, you don't have to do anything and you're covered wherever you go. It's really not the case. Every, even though you buy an annual plan, you still have to re-up every time you travel. You have to register it with the insurance company. Uh, if there's a trip cost, typically annual plans don't cover any trip cost. So they will still charge you if there's a trip cost. They will still charge you in many cases the same or even more than a regular policy. Um, also, all the policies of annual plans are all secondary coverage or not primary. So this is probably one uh, thing that we should get into. Primary coverage, the knowing the difference between primary and secondary is probably the most important distinction to know about travel insurance. Primary coverage means from step one, the insurance company is saying that it's their obligation to pay you, which is what you think you're buying when you buy travel insurance. You think they're just going to pay you. But when you have secondary coverage, which is what all annual plans are, uh, secondary coverage means that even the best insurance company, by buying it, you've given them the right to always point the finger elsewhere. So yeah, maybe we'll pay you. Maybe someone else is more responsible to pay you. And just the fact of that opening up that can of worms can make it much more difficult to get the insurance company to pay. In many cases, they will 
they will be really blatant in who they blame. Even though let's say they know and you know that your health insurance at home will not cover you, they don't care. They will point the finger at them and this can be months and months and months of fighting. And so annual plans are not all they're cracked up to be at this point. They can, they can change them and create a product that's good, but to this point they haven't done that. So I don't okay. recommend annual plans. Okay, so that's good to know. No on the annual plans. All right, so I know that there are so many different things that can be covered with travel insurance, um, but I think that it would be great if you could just highlight some of the main protections besides medical, like mm -hmm. why else would someone want to consider getting travel insurance? Right, so there's a lot of extra ones you can buy, which we can get into like optional coverages, but um, built in, you know, you have the baggage loss, bag delay, trip delay. So what is trip delay, right? A lot of people not even clear what that is. Baggage loss, baggage delay, I think is, is fairly obvious. Um, and that happens a lot. But in terms of trip delay, let's say you're going home from your trip. You know, you went to Spain and now you're supposed to catch your flight home. Your flight is delayed or canceled till the next day, which believe it or not happens like all the time. Okay. I believe um, <laughs> you. I have a feeling you do believe me on that one. Yeah. Um, and so the insurance will pay for hotels and meals uh, while you're delayed, okay, until you're, uh, you know, back on track. And so that is something that we see quite often in terms of getting paid out. And that can be thousands of dollars. And so that's really a fantastic one. Um, let's say bag delay, you know, um, if it's delayed, it depends what policy you have, but many of them, let's pick a normal amount, we'll have, you know, $500 per person to spend on they call it necessary personal items, you know, clothing, toiletries, things like that. So let's say you have four people in your household. I mean, you know, you could on the trip with you. I mean, you could spend two thousand dollars on, you know, if your bags are delayed for three hours. Okay, that's a lot of money. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits here. Another one that I love, which is an optional thing, you have to add it. Not every company offers it, but many do. It's called travel inconvenience. And so there's a list of 22 different things that can happen on your trip. And if any of these things happen, they're going to pay you $250 cash per person on your on your trip, uh, up to a maximum of three, uh, you know, instances. And so you would think that what would they put on there, right? They would put on uh, the most random thing that ever, right? Something that will never happen. You know, your air conditioning breaks in your hotel room, and it it makes a jingle noise for 20 hours straight. Then we're going to pay you, right? But what's actually in there is flight delay. Flight cancellation, which is crazy. I mean, this stuff happens yeah. all day. It happens every day. So I have a family, let's say. I'm not great at math. I'm getting my phone out here. But let's say I have a family of five people because you're into families, right? So let's say we have a yes. family of five, six, we'll even say six people. And you have a flight delay. Flight delay is typically termed as six hours, okay? Or a flight cancellation, which could be an hour. It could be a flight cancellation. Flight's canceled. Here's your new flight. Um, or there's flight diversion where you're supposed to go, let's say, to JFK and you go to Newark or something like that. Th these kind, this kind of thing happens a lot. Anyway, six people, you got one flight delay, that's $1,500 cash. I mean, your policy could have costed you 200 bucks. And so I see that travel inconvenience as being something that is killing the insurance companies. Why they offer it, I have no idea. But we we almost will say 95% of our clients will buy that. And they think that we're pushing it so that we make the price more because it's 15, one five, fifteen dollars a person more. I, I trust you, I don't care. We don't care about $15, I promise you that. But we want what's best for our clients. And so we just had a lady yesterday who called, so excited, literally so excited. She's like, I just got a letter, from, an email from the airline. My flight has been canceled and they're diverting us to a different airline. And she also had five, six people. She's getting, she's gonna get like three grand. It's crazy. That's awesome. So, and so like that's, yeah. This, the inconvenience is a excited thing that you're celebrating instead of thinking it's a problem, yeah. right? Like it totally it can be, can be. It. You don't feel as bad if they're gonna pay you three grand to like, you know, be diverted. Cool. Maybe it's not as bad. Right. Um, it but this is the pain. Yeah, but like once you understand a lot of the ins and outs, you can take advantage of these situations, which is why we're here. Because uh, most people on their own, are they gonna really read through all the options and then realize what is in travel and convenience and know all this stuff? You know, so it's rare, but with our clients, we push it really hard. Okay, so let's Just, say our listener, listen. someone's listening and they have planned a trip to Europe and they're like, oh, I planned this two months ago and I'm leaving next week. 
Like, is it too late to add travel insurance? No, you can buy travel insurance um, really up to the minute before your trip. And so, you know, uh, some policies will even allow you to buy travel insurance when you're overseas. But I will say most of them, you would have to buy it when you're in America and you're, a, if, at, you know, you're about to leave. Now, as you keep getting closer to your trip, the prices of travel insurance keep going up. Okay. So as you keep waiting, they will like, it's like a flight similar, I guess, like as you keep getting close to some, a lot of times the flights are higher. Um, so with travel insurance, that's how they build the computer. The, fl the prices will go up mm -hmm. uh, as you get closer, but you could, you could buy it. Uh, you, you know, there are certain things you're missing out on, like pre-existing conditions may not be covered anymore. So if anyone has a medical issue that they're grappling with, um, may not be covered uh, properly. But even pre-existing condition, uh, people many times don't even understand what that means. Um, and so sometimes someone will think like, oh, if I have a heart issue I'm dealing with for five years, you know, will they cover me? And so pre-existing condition in terms of insurance talk is really an issue that popped up in the last 90 days, a new problem that popped up. So it's not, if you're grappling with something for many years, it's always gonna be covered. There's no issue with okay. that. So okay. yeah, just another point to note. So what's kind of the process? like? I'm, I just booked a trip, let's say, and I'm, I want to get insurance. Like, what kind of information would I come to you for? I mean, you have a website, Travel Defend. Like, do you just go yeah. and fill out all your info there? Do you call? Do you chat with someone Right, online? so it's a good like, question. Are you asking, like, with us or just in general? Yeah, with you. I think with, with you. Yeah. Okay. So we have something super cool that nobody else has in addition to the concierge service. It's called the Quote Optimizer, okay? And so when you go to our website, which is traveldefend.com, and you click Get Quote, um, there's a whole interactive, it's almost like a chat bubbles, like an iPhone kind of look. And we're basically gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Um, and our optimizer will go through with artificial intelligence with the rules that, we've, that we know, because we've trained it, to know everything there is to know about travel insurance in real life. And it will automatically go through hundreds of policies in America and give you the best one or two options specifically for you, okay, based on the answers that you've given it. So it's really powerful because right now, how do you buy travel insurance without us? You would either go to an Expedia type site that will have 100 options. You don't know what the hell you're looking at. You're just like, okay, there's like your eyes are glazing over with like a million options. Or you can go, let's say, to AIG or Allianz or whatever, and you can get the one or two options that they offer for you, right? Which is very limiting to just like what they have to offer. And so our optimizer is trained to automatically go through every option and give you the best options for you. So either you can do that, uh, which is really powerful, and, and then you're under our account. And so as a brokerage, if you have a problem, we can actually help you. And even when you purchase it in that way, um, we will reach out to you uh, right away. One of our team members will reach out to you either by WhatsApp or by text and say, hey, just want you to know, we see your policy here. We're here for you. If you have any problem, reach out to us. And most people who get that, sometimes it's even a video message that will video, personal video to the person. And we're saying, hey, you know, Jane, just want you to know, uh, my name is Mark, whatever, from Travel Defend. We're here to help you. And people like freak out over that. They can't believe it. Um, and that's something we're never going to lose no matter how, I mean, we're, we have thousands of clients now, but no matter how big we get, we will never lose, uh, that, like you said, white glove service, um, because it's so important. It's so important to help people in real life. And we tell them, if you have any issue, you reach out like that because many people don't want to talk to anyone. They just want to buy what they want to buy. And they're not interested in having a whole conversation. I get that. That's why the optimizer is there. Um, if you do want to call and we have, you know, a whole staff here, always ready to help you. Uh, you would just call our phone number on our website, traveldefend.com. Phone number is there. Um, and our concierge service is there to help you. Whether this is a super cheap policy or very expensive policy, it's not relevant. Our team is there to help you regardless. We don't care. We're here for all. All can come. We'll help anyone that calls us. I love that. It sounds like you've really simplified the process. And I love yeah. the WhatsApp reaching out. It just makes it so much easier because I have thought when I bought a plan before, I'm like, well, I hope I don't have a problem because <laughs> I have no idea what I'll do. So now you've Correct. solved that pain point right there. Now you did yeah. mention like, I don't care if it's an inexpensive policy or a super expensive policy. And I think the cost of travel insurance can sometimes be kind of the 
trouble or the part that people question when they're considering it, you know, like, oh, we already paid for this trip. I don't want to pay any more money. Like, can you just give an idea? And I know that it's totally going to range, right, depending on coverage. But, like, let's say it's a $10,000 trip to Europe for a couple. I mean, like, what is kind of the range of travel insurance cost? Like, what could people expect? Well, is the couple 75 years old? Are they 25 years old? Like, that's the deciding like factor. 40. I don't uh, know. I'm just saying, like, 40 is not going to be that bad. Okay. Yeah. I mean, are people going to pay, you know, if it's 10000 is like the travel insurance going to be a grand or is it going to be more like two fifty? Well, like, what do you think? Well, you, again, you can find can many different policies, right? So if it's secondary coverage, it will be cheaper. If you have crappy medical, it will be mm -hmm. cheaper. Um, if it's cheaper, uh, there's a reason why it's cheaper, okay? Like people will, some, they don't understand that distinction with, let's say cars, they know it's a Rolls Royce or it's a Honda Civic. They understand, oh, it's different price for a reason. But sometimes people are like, oh, you quoted me 500. I see a policy here for 200. I'm like, of course, there is a policy for 200. But what is it? Is it paper? Is it just going to be burnt? You know, if you want something like actually real in real life, um, you know, you're going to have to have, in my opinion, uh, primary coverage. If you're leaving America, you should have a $100,000 medical, primary medical and a million dollar medical evacuation. That's what I would want all of our clients to have. Uh, because one night in a hospital with an ambulance, I mean, you're going to get, depending on where in the world, but you're going to get thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar bill. Okay, these these hospitals, especially when you're a tourist from America, they will kill you. Okay, uh, and I see it all the time. People submit their medical bills all the time. I see I see it in real life. So um, I think it's important that you have a hundred thousand dollar medical, a million dollar medical evacuation. Um, and so for typically, again, this is just, I, I only would say, cause I do thousands of these. If you're 40 years old and it's a $10,000 trip, it would probably cost you, um, you know, maybe four or $500 for that. Uh, if you're 70 years old, okay. Or 75, it really could cost a thousand dollars. You know, if you're in your eighties, it could cost $1,500. Um, we had a man last week that was 106. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's his policy he's was. Still traveling. It is, but he was uh, not so happy with his price. Ten thousand dollar trip. It was pro something like three grand. You know, like, yeah. like the ratio of price was like super high. But mm -hmm. you know, he's one hundred and six. So insurance companies super nervous about that guy. So really, as you get older, that. just statistically, you know, the the prices will go up. They don't ever really ask for your personal health. They're not looking for that. It's really just mm -hmm. statistic based on your age. Because uh, sometimes people are like, I'm 70, I'm the best shape, I'm better shape than 30 year olds, which could be true, but uh, it's not relevant. They don't care about that. They're just doing statistics, you know? Yeah. And is it cheaper, like to, when you add per person, like, you know, if you were buying travel insurance for one person versus like a family for five, like, is it the same cost per person or as you add kids, like, do they not cost as much to add on to them? Right. So what's interesting is that not only do kids not, for most, again, when I speak, I'm putting general yes, terms here, general. but because there's obviously different policies that will go against what I'm saying. But in most policies in America, when you add kids, it actually makes the entire policy cheaper, the entire policy cheaper. So if let's say we have two adults who are both 50 years old, okay, and their $10,000 would be 500 bucks. You add three kids to that, this policy could be 300 instead of 500. Oh, wow. Okay. Because what I'm doing is the 10,000, instead of being 5,000 on a 50 year old and the other 5,000 on another 50 year old, it's now 2,000 on a 50 year old, 2,000 on a 50 year old, two, two, two on these little kids. And so it really dilutes the price. And so with many policies, the more kids you have, the cheaper the policy can get, which is makes no sense it's right. it's weird you have more people you think there are more risk there but i don't make the rules listen i just yeah. know how it is uh so for families typically uh, travel insurance can be really cheap really cheap and the benefits can be huge because let's say you have five people you know one trip delay which let's say you know normally if it was two people they would pay you let's say three hundred dollars a night now you're getting $300. Everything is per person in travel insurance. So instead of 600, right, you would get 300 times five, which would be 1500 a night. So, and you didn't pay extra, for, you actually paid less. Right. Which and is so crazy. families are really incentivized to buy travel insurance for sure. Yeah. So don't be hesitant if you're a family going on a big trip. 
Oh, what yeah. Who's going to take their kids to a random country without health insurance? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that would make me very nervous. Okay, are there any other things that you think we need to share about? Yeah, there, there's one, there's one thing that I do think is important that families okay. understand because we do with, we deal with a ton of families here, is that let's say you have extended family members because we have many family trips uh, that we do where you have you know people who live in four different households okay for example and it could be 20 people on the trip now we all 20 people cannot be on the same policy every household needs their own policy and if you don't do that correctly in many cases uh you're setting yourself up for failure because the insurance company will look at these 20 people and they say hey those people don't live over there they can invalidate your entire policy okay, okay. so in addition we want to make sure in the portal of the insurance company that all these households are linked together so that if something happens to one person, all of you can collect now. Okay? okay. Or on the trip, it's called trip interruption. Something happens to, let's say, a grandmother has a problem, a stroke or something, and your trip is over, that all the people on the trip can all have flights paid for them home, can all get their money back and everything like that. And so the point is when you're on your own, a lot of people, they don't know how to link. You don't know. You're not going to be able to. You need, a, you need to be in the option. portal. So that's yeah, it is, yeah, it's important. You have to be in the portal and stuff like that. So it doesn't cost more, but we do that for families as well. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. So, I mean, obviously you can go and shop for travel insurance anywhere on the web, but it does sound to me like Ben's company, Travel Defend, would be a really great option. So I'm going to definitely look into that for our family's trips that we have coming up. Um, okay, so I think we've covered most of the highlights, reasons why you'd want travel insurance, what it covers, how to find it, um, all the things. So much good information. Um, so before we end, I like to wrap up with three final questions. So first of all, what is one of your favorite de destinations that you have visited? So that's a really great question. And by the way, after I'm done, I'm going to throw the question back to you because I'm really oh, curious. Oh, no. So <laughs> start thinking, fair. start thinking. Okay. I want, I'm cur I always love these questions. I'm curious to know because uh, I've been to many countries, but there's also obviously so many I haven't been to. Um, and there's so many I want to answer now. Um, but my number one uh, would be Israel. I don't know if you've ever been to Israel. I have last year. Oh, my God. Yeah, it right? So it's mm -hmm. very like you really feel a certain... You know, it's the home to three religions, right? Uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And I felt, I'm not like super religious or anything, but I did feel like a certain spirituality there that I have yet to experience anywhere else. Uh, and the history is unlike anything. The food is incredible. I don't know if you went out to eat there, but the food was amazing. Yeah. Um, I love the beaches, the weather. I just had the best time. I just really had the best time there. That's awesome. All right, well, coming back to me, it's hard to pick, but I'm going to go for Krakow, Poland. I've really? been able to visit there twice, um, wow. and it's such a charming little town. It's like just what you would imagine a cute European city would be with the city right. square, and there's like the salt mine you can tour that was super unique. It was also near wow. Auschwitz which was nice. a very moving experience to sure, visit that. Sure, of course. Um, and the food Yeah, my wife uh, visited there as well. Okay. Did she enjoy it? I mean, not in the classical sense of enjoyment, but she oh, enjoyed Oh, Auschwitz? It. Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant Krakow. Yeah, <laughs> no, Auschwitz, no, not enjoy. Yeah. Right, like but... she she was meaningful, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, it's, it's I, I, I really can't handle that kind of stuff. It's way too hardcore for me. Um, but just to go see the city, I would love to do that for sure. Yeah. It's a beautiful city, so I recommend that. Okay, so what is one item that you'd love to take with you on every trip? Uh, an item I love to take with me on every trip. Um, it's not going to be anything that's going to be really memorable, I would say. But uh, I just love to take my, my laptop, basically. I, I right. just I have a new MacBook Air. Uh, brand new, and nice I, I highly recommend it. It's it's like I, I it's the first one I bought in seven years, and so oh, you kind of so say like, an upgrade. yeah, but like I didn't realize how much of an upgrade it was. Like it's awesome, and I literally like I'm obsessed with it. So I would say that. That's awesome. I need a new laptop. We have three kids that MacBook are now all in Air. college, and we've bought all of them new laptops, and I'm the one with the old one. But that's okay. The MacBook that's Air. Right. You're gonna love it. Yeah. I mean, that'll have to be on my list sometime. <laughs> All right. 
And now, final question, uh, where are you going next? Where am I going next? So I, I don't, yeah, I don't have anything. Well, I, I do know where I'm going next, but it's not that like exciting. Um, but I was going to go with my family uh, to Orlando for winter break. Oh, so that's fun. I have family there and, okay. you know, obviously Disney and all this kind of thing because I have little kids. So, oh, that'll be fun. Something. Yeah, They'll yeah. Not, not as exotic as, uh, yeah. you know, as some others, Orlando's but it's great. a great family destination. So, yes, yes. Okay. Now, um, if people wanted to reach out and learn more about travel insurance or um, get in touch with you, is the best way to just head over to Travel Defend or is there another way they could get in contact? Yeah, no, just traveldefend.com. Well, that's the okay. best way to reach us. Our phone number 1-800-578-2871. And our team is there and ready. I don't know if you'll speak to me, but uh, you'd have to ask for me directly. But we have a team there ready to, uh, to help. And uh, just, yeah, super simple, nothing complicated. Okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you, Ben, for joining us. It's been so fun to learn from you. It was so fun talking to you. Thank you so much.